Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, as we like to say in OCLC, depending on where you're joining us today, uh, where, where you're joining us from today. Um, thank you so much for being here for Public Library Work Meets Sustainable Development. Uh, this webinar is actually the fourth in a series of a year long um, a series of discussions being hosted by OCLC Global Council. And it's really about creating awareness and fostering dialogue among library lead leaders on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. If you haven't already, uh, please feel free, as Christina mentioned, to use the chat feature to introduce yourselves. And a, a quick reminder again, please select everyone from the drop down to ensure that your message is seen. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Pilar Martinez and I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Edmonton Public Library in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I am also the Chair of the OCLC Global Council and I serve as Chair of America's Regional Council. I'm delighted to be here today with all of you to act as the moderator and share in this important discussion on global sustainability and public libraries. For those of you who may not know, uh, OCLC Global Council is a 48 member group comprised of library leaders from across the globe. And these library leaders are elected to serve and represent OCLC member library interests. Together, Global Council delegates work to generate, generate insights that help inform OCLC strat strategic direction and advance libraries globally. Uh, we facilitate shared knowledge through thought leadership and collaborative conversations with each other and with members throughout the world. And we promote our shared library values through global cooperation and active participation in the OCLC cooperative. Each year, the Global Council selects an area of focus. And this year, we've selected the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or uh, SDGs, as we like to say for short. Our activities are focused on learning more about how libraries are using the SDGs to help improve their communities. So before we begin today's panel discussion, let's take a moment to hear from our audience. We'll be using, as Christina mentioned, the live polling platform, Poll Everywhere, and the URL is shown on the screen and will be shared via chat as well. So all you need to do to participate is to open up a new browser via your computer or your smart device and click on or enter the URL. So let's start by asking you, our audience, about your awareness of the SDGs. Where is your library on its awareness and use of the SDGs? Fantastic. So lots of awareness um, and also intention on planning to use the SDGs. Let's just see how this unfolds. Great. So most respondents are indicating that there's um, a new awareness um, with some um, planning to use and some actively using. So hopefully today's discussion will help um, stimulate some thought on how you might apply these things in your particular library. So thank you so much for participating in the poll. So we'll begin today panel discussion by um, introducing our panelists and we'll have each one introduce themselves. So let's start with Sarah Campbell. Sarah? Hello, I'm Sarah Campbell. I'm the Executive Director of Portland Public Library in Maine and it is an honor to be with you today. Thank you, Sarah. And our next panelist is Beata Mayink. Beata? Uh, yes, that's right. Probably it's not easy to pronounce. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Beate Meink, uh, and I'm the head of the Reutling uh, Public City Library, as you can see in the background. Uh, Reutling is located uh, in the south of Germany, not in Bavaria, in Swabia. That's a little bit more um, 
to the left, and it has about uh, 100,000 inhabitants. We are a team about 65 employees here in our library, uh, divided in a main library and 10 branches. And I'm a member of the EMEA Executive Committee for a uh, comedy committee, <laughs> but sometimes also a comedy uh, for OCLC <laughs> since 2019. Uh, and I'm happy today here uh, in this session, uh, and I'm a little bit excited, uh, and I hope my uh, English skills uh, don't let me down. So you're doing fabulously, <laughs> Thank Beata. You. Thank you so much. So let's move to Lynette Scherdevin. Lynette? Good morning, everyone, or good morning from uh, New Mexico. I'm Lynette Scherdevin. I'm the director of Rio Rancho Public Libraries here in New Mexico, and I'm an American Regional Council delegate. Welcome. Thanks, Lynette. And last but not least, Eric Cease. Eric? Hi, I'm um, Eric Cease. I'm the director of the Marshall Public Library in uh, beautiful mountainous Pocatello, Idaho. Um, and um, involved as a America's Regional Council delegate, um, as well as um, I'm in my fourth term on ALA as a counselor at large. So I keep my uh, myself busy. <laughs> I guess so. Thank you, Eric. Thank you to all of our panelists for being here and with us for today's discussion. So let's dive right in with our first question for our panelists. Please share how your library is using or planning to use the SDGs for strategic planning. Uh, so let's start with Sarah. Thanks, Pilar. Sorry for the delay. I'm I'm almost forgetting to unmute myself. The classic Zoom move. Uh, <laughs> Yes, so I have been a member of the America's Regional Council serving on uh, OCLC's Global Council for about nine years. And I will be um, a true confessor that I had not heard of the SDGs until OCLC's Global Council took this work up over the last year. And uh, so it has been very, very interesting to me to look at how I can map across the strategic planning that we've done to the SDGs, but I can't say that we've taken the SDGs into account. Um, in the planning that we've done. Um, what strikes me most about the STGs is the way that um, they uh, so, so well articulate the inequities and the disparities. And these are what libraries have long uh, striven to address and to bridge. And certainly the strategic planning of my library um, is very much about how to uh, serve to to bridge disparities, um, particularly as they're related to quality education and child care, economic opportunity, digital and technology access, health disparities and environmental impacts, which are all woven into the SDGs. Um, what strikes me is the way that libraries are quintessential sharers by definition. Um, it's central to how we operate and uh, that Pretty much everything that a public library does is through partnership in the community. Um, and so the SDGs recognize that these goals are only achievable through deep and broad partnership and sharing. Um, and because of our sharing models, we are uh, models of sustainable consumption. And so we sort of embody the values of sustainability. Um, also, uh, just as a last thought, I see the SDG. SDGs really demonstrating how we live in a series of concentric communities um, and they're interrelated. So when setting goals, you think about an individual's goal within in your organization, an individual employee fits with the goals of the department, fits with the goals of the institution, which then fits with the goals in your uh, community, your state, your country, and ultimately globally. So um, I see these all being couched together and extremely important for us to recognize our interconnectedness. Thank you, Sarah, and you're certainly not alone in um, not being aware of the SDGs with the with the poll response. And I, I have to share and confess I wasn't aware of them before OCLC Global Council started talking about them either. So thank you. Uh, Beata, let's go to you. 
Uh, yes, I think I can confirm everything that Sarah says. Um, uh, but I also think that the SDGs are they're kind of they're, they're very near to us to our institutions because, um, for example, I think libraries uh, have always been a uh, work very sustainable. Uh, Reutlingen, the Reutlingen Public Library, was founded in uh, 1652 uh, with the aim of uh, making knowledge accessible to a broad population, and we still do this today. Uh, so I don't know another institution that exists for such a long time and has not yet become redundant. So, um, so the SDGs are fitting really uh, good with us. Uh, many measures of our work, our own strategic uh, goals are already reflected in the sustainable goals. In our strategic papers, such as a library concept, uh, which we update every five years, we refer to the SDGs and thus legitimize our work before our donors. Um, also, in addition, the SDGs help us not to forget important issues and to think about uh, the goals in all levels of our work. Um, they are kind of an instrument um, for externally work on a political level also. Uh, for example, toward the city administration or the city parliament, because also the parliaments, also the city parliaments, they know the SDGs uh, and I don't have to explain them to them uh, anymore. So we're kind of the same level when we're talking about um, the same goals. Uh, and they work also externally as an instrument for community building. Um, um, for example, uh, with other institutions or initiatives uh, that also pursue the SDGs. Um, we have gained many new partnerships following the SDG goals uh, in the last uh, years. And at the same time, we opened us uh, strongly to new partnerships. In Reutling, for example, we're working together with uh, groups like the critical mass movement or food sharing. Uh, we're working together with the climate agency here. Uh, and this, this has resulted uh, in many exciting new connections and collaborations because we all follow these goals and we all know them. Um, so what I can um, I can give the advice to choke a lo uh, to to check locally um, who in your city is already uh, developing uh, own sustainable strategies and uh, just get in touch with them to uh, reach the aims or the goals together. Um, what you also can do is um, you have to uh, convince your employees, um, for example, organize workshops uh, in which the team develops um, their own uh, sustainable strategy. Uh, and as a leader, you can, for example, choose uh, your most important SDGs and uh, develop an action plan with uh, selected stuff. Uh, they, they're all volunteers, I hope. For example, in Reutling, we have a kind of a working group that's the um, a Green Library Working Group, and they uh, try to make our internal work more sustainable and resource saving. Um, and also, we are multipliers. Uh, we can contribute to spreading uh, the SDG. We have a very good reputation and uh, we are very trustable <laughs> and uh, I think we can be a role model with our work um, in our local um, environment. Yes. Thank you, Beata. And some common themes between you and Sarah around partnerships and integrating in strategic plan. And I yep. loved your thoughts around engaging employees and connecting to your municipality or city. That's so, right. Lynette, your turn. Love to hear yes. your thoughts. Um, it, I, I didn't know a lot about the SDGs until um, OCLC brought out the report. And uh, it really helped us to update our strategic plan this past year, where I did involve library staff to work with. Um, and we made two strong goals, which were one is economic viability and then community building. So, within those community buildings, uh, we felt that um, our, we need to make sure that we're supporting education in our community and offering to the community as much support as we possibly can. Uh, we do have a large homeschooling community here in Rio Rancho, and so we've developed our um, new services department, really worked hard on finding ways to outreach to the educators and families by creating newsletters with 
weekly updates and services that we can offer um, because we really want to limit that summer slide. Um, we also go into the summer programming and that was part of our strategic plan. It has been. Um, we really want to be, um, I think it's still a, a uh, Maybe it's an old cliche, but we're a library. Public libraries are the center of a community and we need to be supporting any and all. And we found that uh, education is a big part of that here in Rio Rancho. So um, we continue to do so even during this crazy time. So um, we're also recognized and working with this, you know, communities, the schools and the, and the city to continue to meet some of these um, two goals that we've put together and, and support. Um, and I'll go more in depth as far as economic viability in, in our uh, next question, but um, we do uh, want to support in a variety of ways the, the businesses in our community also. So, thank you. Thank you, Lynette. Uh, really love how you focused and, and uh, selected two to implement within your strategic plan. Eric, hey, um, what are your thoughts? Well, we have uh, we are we are planning to plan right now. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the coronavirus has, has put the little things on hold, and it's hard to bring the community together around these things. But but um, I will join um, what appears to be the majority of you in not having been aware of them before CLC uh, brought them to light, and I was extremely interested right off the bat. Um, and and so I think that we will include. The SDGs and the overview of our strategic plan and try as best we can to tie various recommendations and various um, activities uh, to specific uh, individual strategic goals, uh, one or more, in fact, per act activity, because uh, a, a lot of those goals can be crossed with the same thing. You know, one activity or another, one recommendation or another isn't just specifically tieable to one, but often more than one. Um, so that's our, our goal is to tie it, tie it that way. Um, you know, as, as people have said already, much of what we do is already uh, in the spirit of the SDGs. Um, we are education. We do work with workforce development. We are trying to level the playing field. Um, a lot of the things that, that are involved in the spirit of the SDGs, um, we, we do and we do well. Um, and, and maybe, you know, we, we've been very successful at the SDGs without knowing that we were doing that. Um, so, but one of the things that I did too when I, when I came back from the OCLC uh, presentation was to um, talk with my staff about them. And, and we have uh, at this library, I've got uh, 20, it's a you know, reasonably small library, I've got 26 employees. And, and I gave them the opportunity because each of our employees has a chance to do uh, a learning activity each month um, on their own various things that are interest to them either learning more about different departments or different things outside of the library. And I gave everybody an opportunity to uh, take one of the strategic development goals and talk about how the library could, could use those uh, to function in the future. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot you can do. Uh, and and I, I'm really excited about the possibilities. Thank you, Eric. And some, uh, I, I, there's, we're, we're all at different stages. I think that's been reflected in your remarks. And uh, that, that collaboration is so key. And the, the alignment that you've identified with the SDGs, the natural alignment um, with what we do and, and what we're trying to do is uh, really evident, I think, with, through your remarks. So thank you. So how about we move to our, our next discussion question? And um, given, as you've mentioned, Lynette, the crazy times we're living in and the challenges that we faced over this past year, how are the SDGs supporting your library work as we emerge and move forward? And Eric, we just finished with you. Let's, let's start with you. Well, there we go. <laughs> I think the pandemic has highlighted what we already knew existed, but that's the digital divide. When we were closed for a couple of months, there were uh, some really significant challenges for much of my community uh, who don't have any access to online things except through the library, et cetera. And we really provide services and uh, support that, that really, when we're not available, makes it difficult for a lot of people to exist and, and 
today's society. Um, but what, I, what was also interesting was that everybody's got to deal with this somewhere, some way, right? You know? And so um, I um, looked at some of the things that the libraries around the state are doing. We have uh, McCall, the tiny community of about 3,000 people uh, that uh, put together a, a learning mobile, if you will, a bus that went around and helped support um, school things throughout their community. It's a small community and it's easy to reach a lot of people, but they looked at that education piece and said, here's what we can do. Um, and, and, that's, and that's what uh, they did. There's another uh, library of about a uh, community of about 8,000 people um, who has planned to use the SDGs uh, as a framework for all their programs. Um, and you know, the, and, and they want to tie every program they've got to one or more of the SDGs. Um, there, it's just it's neat that people can do these things. And as we go forward, um, a lot of the stuff that that we've planned and had to put in place because of necessity suddenly becomes an opportunity that we weren't aware of before. Um, and so I think the SDGs do provide a great framework for moving forward. And, and, and I think that it would be valuable to see what you can use um, SDGs as a framework for, because there are many opportunities. And I think that the, the whole coronavirus, the pandemic, um, really made us open our eyes and think in ways that we hadn't had to before. And we can use that to our advantage as we go forward. Thank you, Eric. And yeah, what a positive perspective, not wasting um, opportunities that come out of a crisis with a silver lining. Well, may, Let, may I add one real quick thing? Of course, um, please do. I, um, I, I also want to say that you know we're our state is full of libraries that have two or three or five employees, uh, small communities, and it doesn't take a huge staff or bucket loads of money to focus on what you can help your community with, um, especially with the SDGs. So mm -hmm. I, I, in our particular state, um, we have a, t a bunch of tiny libraries, and yet they're the ones that seem to be coming forward. So I wanna make sure that anybody's listening, you don't have to be rich or packed with people to do these things. Some of the most amazing things come out of the smaller places. Mm -hmm. Well, that ability to be nimble and move quickly is yeah. um, perhaps the capacity is stronger with a smaller organization for sure. Lynette, your thoughts? Yes, <clears throat> this yeah, this past year has been quite interesting. Um, I worked a lot with my uh, managers creating and discussing a variety of phases of how we could meet meet and reach our community. Um, so because we had a lot of things going on. We um, have a, a New Mexico's broadband is not really um, huge. So we um, talked about ways of lending laptops and hotspots. So that's been very popular and we're continuing to add to that. We're also knowing um, we wanted to continue to, to support our economic growth goal that we had in our strategic plan because it was like, Okay, a lot of small businesses are struggling right now or closed during the pandemic, but the um, a lot of the business partnerships that we had with uh, Goodwill or West or SCORE, uh, we're continuing to do online classes and uh, teaching a lot of skills that these small businesses could continue to, to um, improve on or help reshape their, their business during this time and as we slowly reopen what they can do. Um, so those partnerships have been very valuable for us during this past year and going forward. Um, we built them up quite well beforehand. Uh, we worked with our Chamber of Commerce. Um, we really built up a resource page on our, our library website. So um, showing ways that we can support small businesses, which goes along with, you know, continuing education and, and um, not only resources for small businesses, but resources for teachers and homeschoolers and the community at large. But we also know that there's a group out there that doesn't have access to broadband. So 
um, how are we reaching those and we don't have our library open. Um, so we made flyers and dropped them off at all our outreach centers that they still were, uh, you know, having access to some public and letting them know, call us. We're, we're, we're there by phone and uh, that's really helped maintain a good um, relationship with our community. Um, and our city has been very supportive of keeping us going. Um, my managers and staff really work together to continue to find ways that we can continue to sustain ourselves, let alone um, sustaining the community, which is our main focus and staying safe. But yeah, going forward, um, what is the new term? New norm? <laughs> new normal? <laughs> With our new world, um, we're, we're really focusing on, um, you know, libraries aren't going to go back to the way they were, but we're redeveloping and really thinking and bringing these sustainable goals in. Um, how can we use those to continue to educate our, our community? So um, it's a great thing, but it, I'm one of these persons. One or two goals is great. And then next year we'll look at the next two goals because you, you don't want to overload yourself either. Um, but then how do they blend together as you move forward? So uh, mm -hmm. we've been doing a great job keeping things going and and uh, virtually as much as possible. So, sounds like it. I mean, both you and Eric, you know, the creativity that's arisen out of this crisis, right, right. Um, is is amazing. And I think you're right. You know, what? How is this going to change um, how we do things going forward? And right. Um, so, Nyaka, any thought? Oh, sorry, Lynette, you go ahead. That, just wanted to just say I agree with Eric. We can do a lot with no money. Yep. <laughs> Uh, because uh, we're very imaginative in in our ways of creating uh, a lot with a little. So uh, just I, wanted I, to reinforce that. <laughs> well, I agree. We can. We're really efficient at and effective at using our resources <laughs> and stretching that dollar a long dollar. way. So <laughs> yeah, very true. Yeah. Thanks, Lynette. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Beata. Your thoughts? Yeah, what I'm really happy to hear is that everywhere in the world, the libraries have uh, the same uh, challenges and problems. We, we have to deal with it. That's really good to know for me. Um, yeah, it was a really an insanely difficult year the last year, and I think we're still inside. It's not over and it's still a challenge every day. Uh, Corona has reinforced many of the problems that the SDGs seek to address. Mm -hmm. um, everything has been accelerated and suddenly become very, very urgent. Uh, so everybody was very, very fast. And um, what I get, you know, what I think is that the sustainable uh, development goals, they're, they're still relevant and there's still a guideline we should not uh, uh, lose out of our um, view or our eyes, uh, we have to follow it. Um, I think they're more relevant than ever, but what we need to do, we, um, we have to change uh, the way we, we act, um, not the what was changing, but the how. Uh, we have um, we have to take many detours. We had to find new ways. Uh, we have to be fast. We have to be creative. We lost our place. Huh? We were closed, and we had um, we we we. We should, we, we must help or we, um, it, it was very hard to reach our customers uh, with our services uh, at the beginning. And now, now it's getting better. We found ways and we could act and we could help, but it, um, what we really had um, to go through was this, um, this fast working. Yeah. Usually we are librarians in Germany. We're always hundred percent. Yeah. We're talking a lot, we're making big plans <laughs> and we want to be safe. Um, but this crisis was totally different. We had to be so fast, uh, but there was also empowerment for us because we get to know what we can do. Um, and the sustainable development goals, they were still the guideline. They did not change. Um, they are still so relevant and uh, important for us. Um, but we have to find other ways. Thank you, Beata. Yeah, so sort of not to not to lose our edge. We still need to be on top of things and, and uh, not kind of be too passive. Is that, yeah, interesting comment. And last but not least, Sarah, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this question. Thanks, Pilar. I, I 
would say many of the things that my fellow panelists have said. I, I think that we can relate to the other examples so much and um, and I think also uh, some of the needs that our states are addressing and the push for broadband, it's just so important. And, uh, and I think that libraries have been really pivotal in um, raising the profile of some of those issues so that they can be handled on a, on a larger scale. Um, I'll just focus on a couple of things that um, in the context of these huge STG goals that actually are both stressful and motivating. Um, some of the principles that I think um, live with libraries that to me just come into sharper focus with um, as with the pandemic over the last year. Um, so, well, I live in a community in a country of great privilege. Um, we still and libraries still have to strive to address the privilege disparities that exist. And um, I know that my institution can never let up on a local level, uh, identifying ways to bridge them. I, I'll just share that we learned uh, painfully uh, through COVID that Maine, the state that I'm in, statistically had the widest racial disparity in the United States where black and brown residents contracted COVID 20 times the rate of white neighbors. And, and that's just staggering. And um, we weren't, we knew about health disparities, but we weren't as focused. And so I think that um, COVID has helped us really focus on um, those issues. Um, in terms of strategic principles, uh, two things. One is one that we've articulated is uh, that I think such a strength, such a unique strength of public libraries is that we start early and we take the long view. And what I mean by starter, and I think this thinking isn't um, prevalent enough in our world. Um, so what I mean by start early is yes, we there is no child too young for us to be working with in a very hearty way. Um, and then also, well, I, I can't claim for my institution anyway that we're necessarily early adopters of innovation. Um, we definitely are um, trusted explainers once the early majority gets going. And so I think thinking about how important it is for libraries to be in that early position um, and for us to embrace that role. And in terms of taking the long view, um, it, it, this kind of relates back to what Eric and Lynette were talking about of it doesn't matter how big or small you are. Any action, even a small action or an early action leads to growth down the road. And that is sustainable thinking that I think has been embedded in our DNA for a long time. And that's part of what builds the trust in the community. And the other quick point that I'll make is that um, Actually, this was related to some some environmental sustainability projects at the library. We were working with a partner um, who approached us about making em environmental improvements to our building, and he noted that um, that when people are curious or thinking about trying something new, they they turn to somebody who they trust or they turn to their neighbor. And he said, "And a public library is everyone's neighbor." And I think that that's a really important ethic for us to ingest and embrace, um, take to heart for our work. What a beautiful quote. I love that, Sarah. And um, your comment reminds me of something that a mentor of mine used to say, We're, we, we need to be on the cutting edge, not the bleeding edge. Right, <laughs> so, yeah. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So really interesting discussion, you know, mag this, this pandemic has um, magnified the inequities, um, particularly widening the digital divide and um, other inequities that our communities face and, and libraries definitely have a role in supporting and, and resolving some of these systemic issues for sure. So we've had a great discussion so far, and, and we're going to pause for a minute to hear from our participants today, our attendees, with, with another um, um, poll. And we, we want to ask everybody, which two of the five SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, shown here on the screen, do you think are most important for public libraries to focus on? 
And a uh, reminder, we'll be using that poll everywhere and a link will be uh, shared in, in the chat if it hasn't already been. And on the screen, here it is. So out of the five SDGs, which one, which two do you think are most important for public libraries? And our choices are quality education, decent work and economic growth, um, reduced inequalities, peace, justice, and strong in institutions or partnerships. Interesting so far. The winner is reduced inequalities followed by quality education. Oh, could see a tie. Oh, quality education. Oh, no, back and forth here. <laughs> too soon to call. Okay, yeah, so really quality education and reduced inequalities are um, neck and neck and followed by we've got the partnership, which I think is just in our DNA as public libraries. Uh, and then, and then uh, peace, justice, and strong as due to close final one with decent work and economic growth. So thank you everybody for participating in the, in the poll. And we're going to move on to our next question for our panelists uh, today. And thinking about the SDGs and specifically about the communities that you serve, which goal is, is most important for your particular library to, you know, really significantly move the needle in this coming year and Beata, we'll start with you this time. Yeah, um, I, I could not really decide uh, between uh, quality education, the number four and reduced inequalities, uh, but I think it is reduced inequalities that is a little bit more important um, in in the crisis. Um, the inequality in our communities have become become extremely evident at the moment, especially in education. That's how it belongs together. Um, we're still in the middle of the crisis. I can't see that 2021 will be a better year than 2020. Uh, thinking positive, I hope that we will get back to normal in 2022, but I don't know what that normal will be. So um, we will see. But what I know now is that um, we have people here, families, children, and they hadn't had the chance to follow this digital transformation in education because of uh, low income or bad jobs, difficult circumstances, um, also here in Germany, yes. Um, and our system at the moment so far is not directly compensating this uh, inequality. Um, so we have children uh, without their own digital equipment, uh, suddenly alone at home in homeschooling, parents in total dire straits. I think we lost two years of education and in many sectors uh, of the economy, um, the, ex uh, the economy is extremely damaged. And I think uh, the community needs uh, massive support here um, and libraries can be a solution in finding new ways. <laughs> um, we can accompany people in this crisis, we have to adapt our services uh, to the coming needs of our users and um, we have to do this fast, as I already said. Um, yeah, but I think um, the SDGs can help also working um, on on these uh, goals. Um, I think it's also an opportunity for us uh, libraries. Um, uh, I think we're a strong community and we, we are strong uh, institutions and we can do things. We, we can have an impact. Um, yeah, what we learned is our planet is very small. The virus has brought us uh, our whole world uh, to almost a complete still stand. And yeah, I think uh, we have to think about this globally, sure, but we have to also act locally. But first of all, we have to stop talking. <laughs> and um, yeah, you don't have to be rich, just do it. Go acting, um, go outside. Yeah, do it. <laughs> get moving, get going. Yes, yeah. yes. And we, we know, you know, there are kids in our communities who didn't have the technology to work uh, or to, yeah. to attend school online. That was the only option. So, yeah, I am um, seeing a lot about the, 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 the impact that this is going to have on, on the education and the learning of our kids. Sarah. 
your turn. Your thoughts on this one. So I, um, it's sort of a chicken and egg thing a little bit with uh, looking at how the SDGs compare to one another. Um, I'm going to highlight reducing inequalities uh, first, uh, similar to Beata, um, because I think that it is the basis of addressing the other goals. Um, and so in terms of what lens we're bringing to it, uh, I, I am leaning on reducing inequalities. Um, it will increase capacity, it will build momentum so that we can address education goals, economic goals and environmental goals. Um, I'll, I'll share one example from our community uh, where my library plays a um, steering member role in two collective impact initiatives. Uh, one specifically addresses education outcomes in our city, and it's a whole group of partners that are invested in education. And um, yes, it's about the education outcomes, which are brought about by um, the inequities that, and, and so that has become the approach that we're using um, in our actions. And the other collective impact initiative is actually countywide, and uh, it's uh, the backbone is the United Way. You know, again, it's a whole huge variety of partners in the community from industry and uh, business uh, and nonprofit. And um, the focus there is on three key goals, an education goal, a health goal, and a financial stability goal. And as we've been unpacking these and, and uh, setting actions and setting priorities, what has come out is how completely interrelated they are. So the education group is talking about financial stability and the health group is talking about education. And you can't talk about these things, but how they pull on each other and build on each other. Um, so I think becoming part of um, initiatives with other partners. So I guess I'm kind of cheating a little bit and leaning on the goal related to partners. Um, it gives us context for our work because of seeing other partners' perspectives and expertise on shared concerns. Um, it also has provided opportunities to share data so that we can prioritize some of our actions and also evaluate the effectiveness of our actions. And it lends heft to our attempts to solve problems. So, um, Partnership to reduce inequalities is is what I'm emphasizing here. Um, the last point that I'll make is um, honoring the interconnectedness of everything is that um, I think over the last several years, public libraries in particular have really um, been moving into some of the concerns in the community, trying to address them with services which sometimes beg the question of whether it's mission creep and whether, I mean, I think we've all had this discussion in our libraries about um, whether we're being drawn beyond what we should be focused on, like food insecurity and distribution, um, technology support, mental health supports, legal supports. And um, so what I think is very important is that the way that we can accomplish those without wearing ourselves uh, unsustainably thin is through working with partners that have um, complementary expertises to us and um, as we try to tackle these inequities. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. And and uh, I'm interested in, and so pleased that you raised the um, importance of evaluation and uh, to ensure that we know whether we're actually having an impact and, and succeeding. And your comment about mission creep, I think, is something we're we, because we love to say yes to everything. We're so very, very helpful. It kind of goes back full circle, circle to um, what Lynette had said at the outset to focus um, so that we do um, maybe fewer things better. So I think that's a really important sort of reminder of, of, of where we need to think about. Eric, we're going to go to you next. Your thoughts? Sure. I think Sarah and I are pretty much in the same headspace. The two I picked for the poll were partnerships and inequality. So that's 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 where I'm looking at it too. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to focus on the moving the needle part of this question. Um, I, I think we're really excellent, actually, at dealing with education. Uh, we have um, an excellent partnership with the schools. We have great early childhood development programs. We have a lot of things. And so I, I'm not that concerned with trying to get that much better at education. We do really, really well. Uh, likewise, um, with uh, goal number eight, uh, with the work and the economy stuff, we, uh, the libraries throughout Idaho, but uh, Pocatello's as well, um, has excellent resources for finding meaningful work. Uh, and we have partnerships directly with the Idaho Department of Labor. Um, and so we do the work part of this thing, uh, the workforce development things really, really well. Um, and, and so I would like to focus on moving the needle on the, uh, the inequalities question. And as I talked about before, the digital divide and several of us have said that um, really, really showed its head this past year. Um, and and there are there, there's a need for technical literacy, um, which hasn't really been you know thrown out there in full view. And I think we need to do that. Um, it's it's really important to do that. Uh, so what I'd like to concentrate on is seeing what kind of inequalities are out there uh, within our community and how we can best approach them. What um, what is uh, we, we need to know what problems are out there that we can be the solution to. And, and so with, with that, um, all of these are important and they don't exist in silos. They are very much interconnected. Um, so the partnerships we make, as Sarah was talking about, I just, I think, I think the partnerships that we make, the things we do, again, don't cross, or they, they tend to cross a number of the SDGs because they really truly don't exist in silos. Uh, but most significantly, I would like to move the needle locally for my community, for my state, uh, in terms of reducing those inequalities, which have become so glaringly obvious recently. Yes, thank you, Eric. And I hear yeah, that we, we really, um, uh, seen that um, sort of uh, the inequities, particularly around the digital divide, in terms of our service delivery, as uh, as uh, significant. Lynette, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm finding I'm seeing kind of a running theme through our conversation, and and I wanted to just uh, point it out as far as what I'm I'm hearing is how public libraries are trusted resource in the community. And by doing so, we're we're really focusing on meeting the needs of our communities by going out and assessing and knowing who are what what's needed in our community. Um, I'm seeing the need of maintaining quality education in our community and how we can support that. But also um, Rio Rancho is growing and we're struggling on economic development so and businesses. So Making sure that people know and understand and hear that we are a trusted resource is very important for that. Um, not only by having a, a good presence online, um, but also a good working relationship with our community leaders and working with our, um, you know, higher education. Um, I have two college campuses here in Rio Rancho. I have a wonderful health system and our school system is very good so we have really good working relationships with those those organizations along with working with our economic development within the city and our county so that people know that that we're there for them so um and trying to get through all of these and meeting needs um, um in the variety of different ways um the, you know we were a great place for students to come in and didn't matter if it was children, high school students, college students, or adults going back to school. They used our spaces for studying and our wireless constantly and our computers. And now that's kind of, we're trying to find a new way to reset that. So we're continuing to offer as much as we can in our community. So um, I'm, I'm still going back to holding on to the education is so important um, and to be trusted as a resource for um, 
educating our community or being support for them. So that's where that's where I'm at at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Lynette. And I, 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 I hear you. I think about Sarah's comment about chicken or egg, you know, um, chicken and egg kind of is, you know, is the education that's going to bring equity um, or help bring that. So I hear you. And then, of course, I, I, I appreciate the emphasis on our reputation as public libraries in the community and our credibility. We are a well loved institution and we're highly credible. So that helps in terms of that. Um, even partnerships wanting to engage or partners wanting to engage with us. So really interesting um, conversation. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we are going to move to our last question and um, I'm going to start with uh, Earl as a as an OCLC Global Council Library leader. Um, what closing thoughts do you have about um, how libraries can work together? Um, um, to help our world achieve these goals. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to start with Lynette. You just finished. We'll start with you this time. So, sorry, let's begin with you. I remember to hit that mute and mute button. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, thinking about this, um, I continue to uh, refocus back on how important it is to keep a, um, um, sharing ideas with our library leaders in the community. Um, how we can work together to, uh, for me to, to be informed uh, by, you know, reading what's going on in the journals out there, what other libraries are doing, um, keeping abreast of what's happening in the community by reading our local newspapers, sometimes media, <laughs> you have to vet that a little bit, but, you know, trying to find some truth and where, you know, oh, this is happening in a, in a nonprofit, how can I help support that? Um, seeing different ways of keeping those those um, avenues open and continuing to share partnerships. Um, so that's um, I think that was my my main focus is to keep current on issues and how can we address and and focus on what what the needs are. So that's that's my final thoughts right now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure Lynette. I have more. <laughs> no, this is good. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. You know, we need to keep up abreast of, of different initiatives that libraries are undertaking. Eric, now we'll go to you. What are your thoughts about um, what closing thoughts do you have about how we can work together to help achieve these goals? There was a quote from a, a former OCLC delegate that I have always very much liked, and that isn't that the library isn't the heart of the community, or that's not the focus. The community is the heart of the library. Um, libraries are outstanding partners. We play well with each other uh, and we freely share ideas and we have a lot to learn from each other. Um, so I think trying to, to focus outside of your local community to see what people are doing, how they're approaching problems, how you can, can learn from each other and share ideas when you have an excellent idea, make sure that it's shared so that others can work with it. Um, we don't only work with ourselves, we work with our community. And I'm gonna give you an example of uh, a great partnership that we have with our library in our city. Um, the mayor of our city um, took a look at some of the problems with literacy within the state um, and decided to create a million minute challenge. Um, and so he has worked with the libraries and with the school system and the library sort of running the program to over a course of time, each of the schools in our, um, in our city, um, private and public, um, have the opportunity for students to read certain numbers of minutes, keep track of it, and there are prizes for the schools that do the most, um, and to reach 1 million minutes of reading. Um, we did that last year. <laughs> First couple of years, we got close. We actually passed a million last year. Um, but that's an example of how the school, the city, the library can all work together to do something that I think is really important and very positive. And, and so I, I, I think we need to uh, make sure that the library is involved in its community and that the community is, in fact, the heart of what we do. Um, and, and, you know, that there's the, the phrase, think globally, act locally. I think that's exactly what we need to do as much as we can take and give to those of us um, outside of our area. We still need to make sure we're focusing on what we can do within our area 
and uh, and I think that's pretty valuable. Make sure you share your successes. Thank you, Eric, and thanks for reminding us of, you know, the reason we're here and and what we're serving the community. That's that's the I love that quote. Thank you, Sarah. How about you next? Uh, a few thoughts. First off, I want to start, and this is going to sound like a plug, but um, I'm going to encourage people to keep in touch with OCLC um, because by definition, OCLC helps us all think globally and um, it, it really is an important organizational tool, uh, the relationship with OCLC because of what you can learn from it. Um, I've noticed in the chat that there were some questions about why um, climate change and environmental uh, goals weren't part of the five chosen. And that was because of a survey from uh, OCLC where asking generally to librarians which goals they felt libraries, I'm gonna probably botch the explanation. And I know there's another, another webinar on this, but um, which, which of the SDGs do libraries have uh, the most to contribute to? And so that's what led to the five. Um, so I'll just reiterate a couple of points from earlier that um, hold on to our commitment to start early and take the long view. It really does make us unique and uh, and it, it means that we can have an impact. And don't underestimate being a model. Um, there are the specific things that we do, um, but don't underestimate the impact of the fact that we're doing them. Um, and then I, I guess the last thought that I have related to strategic planning is um, that it's, it's going to be important for libraries to do our strategic planning to prepare for challenges, whether these uh, social divides widen or improve. And uh, the more that we can be thinking about what actions to take, whichever way it goes, um, I, I think that that's the way to think. Look for the commonalities so that we are continuing to address these issues, even if they start to narrow. Thank you. How lovely, Sarah. Um, so, uh, the next person, last, but not, not least that we're going to hear from in terms of, um, what's final thoughts uh, is Beata. Beata, I, over to you. I just want to make it quick. Uh, what I want, I just give you some words. It's kind of sharing, 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 building communities, forming alliances, um, uh, listening to discussion like this, um, Building networks. I think that's um, that's the way how we can uh, work together um, uh, to make yeah the world a little bit more better, better place <laughs> for everyone. Um, I think that's what we can do. For example, something we did here. Um, that's excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Beata. And so what what a what a fabulous discussion. I uh it's been really interesting listening to you and I think there's been definitely some themes that um I've heard, you know, we we are incredibly reputable incredible institutions and we are natural partners and we work we're very collaborative. Uh and some other things that I think um there's some natural alignment with the SDGs. And um I think we've heard today some excellent ideas on how we can be more intentional in incorporating um some of those goals into our strategic planning. Uh I've heard uh, some 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 reminders about you know being focused um and not biting off more than we can chew. So we are successful. I love again um the, the inclusion of evaluation. And that that there's um, we can't sort of let our our foot off the pedal. There there are some there is some urgency to this and um, what's happening now, and um, we need to be um, ensure that we're moving quickly. I think sometimes we like to be perfectionists as a profession, and maybe we need to think about what's good enough for us to move forward and still have a, a big impact. So again, um, I hope you all have gained some valuable insights from our amazing panelists today, Eric, Beata, Lynette, and Sarah. And of course, to all of you, our attendees, thank you for joining us and for participating in today's event. And um, before we close, uh, I do have some announcements that I'm hoping you don't mind me sharing. Uh, first, please mark your calendar for the next and final webinar in our series 
on sustainable development goals, insights and inspiration, where Lynn Silipikni, sorry, Conaway, Director of Library Trends and User Research at OCLC will share some findings from some research. That, that will be really interesting. And that's going to take place on May 11th. And you can find out more about that series and accessing recordings from previous events um, and register for the remaining webinar using the link that is shown on the screen. And, and also, I think it's going to be shared in, in the chat. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us today. When you leave today's sessions, session, you'll be asked to complete a brief evaluation. We want to hear your feedback, what we could do better, what worked for you, what we did well. So please take a few moments to share your thoughts about today's event. And we really look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on May 11th. So once again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you.